Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to create a fully dynamic budget tracker inside of Microsoft Excel. We've created a template for you to use, but we will also be describing all of the steps in order to input your real data into this template for real-time results. The benefit to using a dynamic tracker inside of Excel is that for the most part, you can import a CSV file every month of your bank statements. And since all of the preliminary work has already been done, it's almost fully automated in terms of calculating your income, your expenses, your categories, et cetera. So before we jump into the tutorial, if you guys are interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software, put those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so we went ahead and created a .xlsx document, and we're gonna leave this in the description for you guys to download and follow along yourselves. Okay, so we're inside of the .xlsx. Once you've downloaded it and opened it up, you'll see something that looks pretty much exactly like this. Let me quickly break down the layout of the document before we get into importing the actual values. So we have the dashboard. This is where we are right now, and this is basically gonna give us a general overview of our total income and expenses year to date. Next up is the data tab. Here, we're gonna import our actual values. This is gonna be the individual transactions, their amounts, the category, and a general description. The rest of the document is broken down by each month individually. And this is basically a combination of quick little manual inputs, but the amounts here are going to auto-populate based on our data tab. So the months are being calculated off of the data sheet, and then the dashboard sheet is being calculated off of the months, if that makes sense. All right. so. Now that you guys have a basic understanding of how the document is laid out, let's go ahead and start inputting some data. Okay, so before we actually start touching the data, I just wanna cover the layout and structure of the data because if it is imported improperly, none of the functions are going to work. So it's very important that you actually get this order correct. So the order in which we need our data to be is date, description, category, amount. And yes, you will be able to change the functions if you wanted to do that, or if you have more categories that you want to include. And we will briefly touch on that. But if you just wanna go with the template and not have to mess with formulas, we're gonna make sure that the data is formulated in this way. You will have to do some basic adjustments here, but again, we're gonna walk you guys through every step of the process. All right, guys, so we're gonna start with importing our data. Now, the first step to that is going to be to download some sort of bank transaction statement or something that will give you your transactions in a CSV or similar format. So I have mine prepared here. This is my anonymized bank statement. This is totally made up information, but it, but it will accurately represent a bank account. So we're gonna start on the data tab here in our sheet, and this is where we want to import the data to. Let's go up to the data tab in the top. We're gonna to click get data, and from here we're gonna click from text slash CSV. Let's select our CSV. Here we have the option to load or transform the data, and we're gonna go with transform data. This is gonna pull up the Power Query Editor. Like we said earlier, we're gonna make some adjustments to make sure that our categories match up with the categories already on the sheets. You might see something like this with an original description or a summarized description. We only need one category and generally a simple description is better. This is what Excel made from my real descriptions. And so with that being said, I'm gonna right click and actually just remove this entire column. And I'm gonna do the same thing for status as I don't need that information. Once we've done that, we have a button up here called Close and Load. Let's do close and load two. And we'll click existing worksheet and we want A2, which is the cell we have selected. So we'll press okay. Now I'm just gonna remove the first row since we don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna add a column titled month. Now, since our bank statement didn't automatically export the month as a number, we can do this and it's very, very easy. We'll type the equal sign followed by month and then open parentheses. And then we'll simply just go for our cell, which is this one. As we can see, that automatically adds the month November, so the 11th month of the year, as a number 11. And this is important because it's going to be used in our formulas that we already have inside of our other sheets. All right, so our data here is pretty much good to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at month 11, and we're going to work with this data set first. Let me zoom in to get a better look. Now, the most important thing is going to be matching up all of our categories from our data set with the categories that are on each individual month. And so basically we're gonna do this once and then we will no longer have to do it. 
and each bank will categorize things a little bit differently, which is why this won't be compatible right off the bat. Let me start by selecting the category here and let's go to sort I'm in the data tab here. And we're gonna sort by the description. Actually, we wanna sort by the category. There we go. Okay, so now all the categories are gonna be next to each other. We can see we have a few categories that we need to input. So let's go ahead and see what we have in here so far. So our first category that we have is alcohol and bars. So I'll go back to month 11 and we're just gonna add alcohol and bars. Let's do the same thing for the rest of these categories. So I'm just gonna manually put these in. If you need to add a row, super easy, just right click on any of the rows and click insert. And so I'm gonna fill all of these in until I have all of my categories in place and we'll skip to that part. All right guys, so I've just finished adding all of these categories in. Again, I just took these directly off of how my bank was categorizing them and making sure that the labels match word for word. So again, we're working inside of month 11. We will then take the month 11 sheet and we're gonna copy and paste it to the rest of these so that we don't have to manually do this on each one. Okay, so let's take a look at the function that we currently have inside of here. Again, we've pre-made this function for you guys, so you do not have to worry about it. But in order to expand this to each of these, select one with the function already in it, and then just click and drag down all the way to the bottom of the last category. That's gonna automatically make that change for us. And now that we've done that, we can see all of our actual debits that have been made by category, which is pretty cool. One thing to note here is that the transfer category is coming up as a positive number. This would inaccurately represent our data that we're actually trying to calculate. So I'm gonna delete transfer from this and we're gonna do something else with that figure. So instead of the transfers, which again would be like transfers to our bank, which would be income, we're just gonna manually write our income on B1 of every sheet. There are a lot of ways to report or check what you know what income you made in a month whether it's a report from your job or bank statements or whatever your you know your income was just write in that number manually and let's just put you know a random figure here we'll say our income was twenty five thousand this month now in terms of this category this is what you are intentionally wanting to budget and so again we're going to add negative numbers and this is just based on whatever you think you need to set so i'm going to make up a random value for each go all the way down the list until i'm done with each category so again this will just be based on you making your budget, this is what you want to spend, this is what you actually spent. All right guys, so I finished entering in that column. One thing we may wanna do for formatting sake right now, we could do this on all pages, but select anywhere where it's supposed to be a dollar value, hold command, or sorry, control, shift, and the down arrow. And then on the home page, we can click this little button right here to make sure that it's a dollar amount and not just a number. So I'll do that for both columns here. And we could go back and do this to the data column as well, if we'd like. Okay, so going back in here, we now have our budgeted amount, which the total will automatically be calculated. We have the actual amount. Again, the total is automatically calculated. And this remaining amount, we just have to add a quick formula. As, we just have to add one more quick formula to actually calculate this. So we're gonna do equals absolute value. We wanna know the absolute value of this formula. And then that's gonna be, in this case, B3 minus C3. So we'll close parentheses and add that. And this is going to be a positive number, which is what we want. So this is our positive remaining balance, and these are our negative spends, if that makes sense. And this number should be a positive as well. So let's drag this down all the way to the bottom, and it will auto-calculate that for us. And again, we already have the sum function in here as well. I'll format this as a dollar amount as well. And that's pretty much it for the configuration from our initial statements. If you had a different bank statement, you could basically repeat the process all the way down and just add more categories. And using the Power Query editor, again, you can make different statements be able to work within our already existing document. So we have our remaining, we have our budget, we have our actual, and since we made this an interactive Excel budget tracker, this is automatically gonna be on the dashboard. Remember, since we added some categories though, this is not currently pulling all of the actual information that we need. And let's go ahead and change this B8. So it's currently taking the sum from B8, which would be here. That is not correct. We want it to actually take the sum from, in this case, it's B24. So the 24th row is the correct value. So we'll change that eight to a 24. I'll press enter. Total expenses is going to be C24. Now for our savings, we could add an absolute value function here, or we could also just copy this function. So I'm gonna control C on that and paste this in. And instead of the C column, this would be the D column. So change this to D24. 
and I'll press enter. And so that now this is coming up as a positive number. Now, since I made this pie chart before making those changes, let's go ahead and just delete this and we'll add a new one real quick. So go ahead and select all six of these cells. We're gonna go to the insert tab and here we have a little button for a pie chart. Now let's just add the same 2D pie. Now clicking on this, we can actually change the design or the style of the chart. And maybe we want one that shows our percentages. So again, as I add or manipulate all of these pages, this will all be updated here. All right, let me give you a very quick rundown for how to update this on the rest of your months. So I'm gonna select all of the cells that have data, control C to copy. Let's pretend like we're about to do month 12. Let me zoom in a bit here. I'm gonna select the first cell A1 and do control V to paste. All right, let's go ahead and do our number formatting again like we've shown you guys before. It's gonna fix these little uh, hashtag symbols. Okay, so our category budgeted, you know, make changes to this if you need to or if it's the same every month, you don't even have to touch it. And then it's super easy to actually update this. So we're simply gonna change this number to 12 in the formula. And it's gonna return a zero since we have not added our December transactions, but drag this down. And now the formulas are in place for this to calculate out our actual expense. Change your income manually again, and you'll basically be all set to go for tracking your budgets, and this will reflect an accurate number. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions about any parts of that process, I know that was a bit of a longer video, feel free to drop those in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. We strongly encourage any specific... As our channel grows, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. If you have any specific video topic ideas that you'd like for us to cover, feel free to drop those down below as most of these requests get made into actual videos. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps us to support the channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.